What is a prophet? Someone who sees the future? Someone who sees the present? Someone who works miracles? By the time we get to our passage for today from uh, the book of 2 Kings, Elijah has succeeded Elijah as a prophet. Now, he's done a few things already, enough to be noticed and known. Um, But what is he for? Maybe even more than what is a prophet, we could consider the question, when do we need a prophet? In this story, there is a lot of opportunity for self-reflection and for relating to the different people in the passage, a chance to see ourselves and our world in their journey. And it doesn't start or stop with a few things that I'm going to point out today. Like the story of Thomas and the disciples in that week following Easter. Tune in next April for that. The reading about Naaman has depth and layers to it that you can come back to again and again and find a a new angle or application to consider. Uh, For this week, we're going to focus in on that question. When do we need a prophet? Well, beginning at the beginning, we encounter Naaman. This person is a a prestigious person. He's a warrior. And more than that, he's a winner. He's brought victory and honor to his king and country, um, which in turn has brought him and his family uh, honor and status as well. But he also suffers from leprosy, a condition that... um, what, you know, um, hurts, affects them physically, um, but also in a different way, maybe too, uh, something to, to have, to see, or to be seen. Um, something that separates, uh, in our gospel reading, we encounter the lepers there and they keep their distance, right? This is something that does actually separate people. Um, so something that, that separates him, maybe something that he would um, try to keep from being seen or, 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 or hide, you know, that somehow if he could. Um, what do we hide? When do we feel the need to hide or to separate to keep ourselves away? Like I said, things to reflect on. <laughs> so Naaman has this condition. Um, but he's presented with a solution, right? Hey, someone can take away the one thing, this, this thing that you're, that you're so worried about, this thing that is stopping you, right? Amazing, amazing. Um, but <laughs> again, they're from that place you just conquered and, you know, you would probably never like ask them for help because, right, you've just defeated them, right? How do you go to them for help now? Um, And actually, would you even listen to the person who's telling you where to go now, right? This is his wife's servant, right? The person with the knowledge isn't the one you'd expect. When do we need a prophet? Maybe when we need to look beyond the comfortable, usual, familiar circles that we have, you know, groups we belong to or avenues we'd, we'd, you know, pursue. What does Naaman do? Well, (laughs) he goes the power route, kind of, um, very in line with the social structure as established, right? He goes to the king of Aram, right? And basically says, you know, hey, king of Aram, you know, write to the king of Israel, please. (laughs) And remember, you know, I, Naaman, have brought you victory, you know, just kind of, putting in that little, you know, he just by being him, he has this little piece of leverage there, right? And in the world they live in, yeah, he would. Um, and the king of Israel does, right? You know, um, those, those middle verses. So Naaman went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went taking with him 10 talents of silver 
6,000 shekels of gold and 10 sets of garments. So like, yeah, this, this whole extravagant entourage, you know, arrives and brings this letter to the king of Israel um, that says, you know, when this letter reaches, you know that I have sent you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> right. Um, I get it. You know, the, the tearing of the clothes now. Um, but really the, the kings kind of fall into that same pattern, right? That power route of the social structure as established. The king is supposed to be the most powerful, the person with all the answers. Everything is on his shoulders. And so the king of Israel despairs because he can't do this. He tears his clothes, a sign of anguish, of mourning. When do we need a prophet? When it's too much. When we can't. When we think we're really on our own. Why have you torn your clothes? Now, to me, this is the perfect response of the prophet Elijah. I mean, it really just snaps everything back into perspective. <laughs> In fact, you can almost, you know, see Elijah saying this a couple of different ways, that, that earnest way, but also, you know, a little bit. Why'd you tear your clothes? That's <laughs> really dramatic. Just send them over. Because it's not over. God's got this. When do we need a prophet? When we need reminding of just that, that it's not over, that God's actually the one that's got this, got you. When we say no to that message or think it should be harder than that, right? Back to, back to Naaman. Um, <laughs> the task isn't, I don't know, difficult enough? The water's not good enough? I mean, now who's being dramatic? When we don't see that grace and love and renewal from God as the gift that it is. Now his servants step in, you know, and say, hey, if this had been something more difficult, wouldn't you have done it? If it had been more work, would it, would it make sense then? You know, and I, you know, play that out. I can almost see Naaman being like, fine, go down to the Jordan, one wash, two washes, wait, huh, three washes, four, is this five working, six, seven? What? When do we need a prophet? Maybe when it's simple. That message that grace and love and healing and renewal and restoration are ours already. A gift from God. A gift that God does give to us. Well, this week, the sermon is more of a process uh, or an invitation to, to go into the story and to see what you see, to reflect on your story as you join these individuals on their journey. When do we need a prophet? When we think we have to hide? When there is a solution to that, whatever that is, um, but it's something that comes from an unexpected place, a place you might have to rethink a few things to consider. When the status quo itself might need rethinking. When it feels like too much, or you can't, or you're on your own. Why'd you tear your clothes? <laughs> It's not over. God's got you. God's grace and love and renewal and restoration are a gift. One that God gives us. 
When do we need a prophet? Hallelujah that we have them. Amen.